If we as humans think of something as non-human taking control, we often reject it. So my project is about making the engagement with autonomous vehicles a much more human thing. It shouldn't be just about screens and traditional ideas of artificial intelligence. When we try to interact with these non-human entities, we interact with them in the same way that we'll interact with Alexa or Siri. Um, and there's no real serious engagement with them. So I reject this idea of concepts that put forward an avatar, and instead my project focuses on the thought process of the vehicle. So uh, 3D imaging in the brain has made a lot of progress in recent decades, and uh, in particular diffusion tensor imaging. Uh, which maps fluid pathways in the brain and it allows us to track the activity in, in three dimensions in someone's brain. And I use this as a sort of motif, an inspiration point, uh, to really uh, visualise the actual thought process of the vehicle itself. So, um, so as the vehicle actually moves along in different environments on its journey, um, the, this ambient display will then be changing as people and objects move closer to the vehicle, as, as a deer runs out across the road. Um, and then the ambient display will be constantly changing along the journey, which means that um, the passenger will, will constantly be getting this ambient communication um, of its situation along the journey. Uh, it's a much more intuitive uh, relationship that you have with the vehicle instead of uh, just command and deliver that we see in, in vehicles and many devices today. Uh, although the interaction is sort of the key to this project, the form of the vehicle is massively important because it's the first engagement that you have with the vehicle. And so I realised that this car had to be desirable. It's much more about the, this idea of a vehicle that you inhabit rather than just own and use. And so your relationship with the vehicle comes much more personal. It kind of reads your emotions and understands your state of being um, and potentially changes your journey accordingly. Uh, there are massive advancements in uh, reading your state of being, so reading your sort of eye fluctuations or your, your heart rate and your, uh, your heart pressure and things like that, which can um, allow technology to understand the, the state you're in. I mean, the 20th century sort of dream of, of car culture was the joy of driving. It's about owning a vehicle and, and heading out onto the open road. Um, but autonomous travel won't necessarily replace that. Um, it's much more about finding those areas of driving which become mundane or dangerous and replacing them with, with something which is much more efficient and much safer. Um, so brands spend uh, a lot of money trying to put their personality into the vehicles that they make. Um, but I think what's interesting with autonomous vehicles is they'll start to reflect the personality of their owner or their, the, people, the person that's, uh, that they're driving. There are a lot of companies that I think see autonomy as being quite far off. Um, I think the issue is that if we want to reap the benefits of autonomous travel and autonomous systems, uh, the benefits in efficiency and safety, we need to start bridging these gaps towards um, how we actually interact with the technology and how we trust in the technology. And so while the technology is maturing and we're coming close to level five autonomy, even if we're far away with legislation or with implementation, we still need to be building people's trust in the technology and, and making people familiar with the technology enough so that we can enjoy, enjoy it when it comes. In the future, your car will reflect who you are, not just on the exterior, but beneath the surface as well, in the way that it moves, in the way that it behaves, and in the way that it thinks.